Mopar people. Welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. I did get to go racing on Sunday, and I do believe the car did better, but it slowed down a little bit. Let's talk about why. So it's been about a month since I went out last. Last time I was out, the high of the day was, I think, 66 degrees, light breeze, air temperature was wonderful, um, the pressure was wonderful. This time, the highs were in the low to mid 80s, and it was pretty nasty out. So I don't mind at all. You'll see a little bit of drop in ET. I don't think it has anything to do with the converter change. And it was sunshine all day with a 30 mile per hour wind. So you'll see that in the videos. There's a flagpole sticking straight out, uh, the flag is. Let me show you some slips. And the one other thing I should have uh, brought with me. So you'll see my big ugly board here with all these stickers on it. And it does actually serve a purpose. It will seal the hood scoop to the carburetor. And it does make a difference. I've seen up to uh, a mile, one and a half mile per hour difference running this thing versus not. And I was kind of in a rush on Sunday morning, so I, I forgot to put it back on after I did everything else under the hood. Uh, also, I did not change the jetting on the carburetor because my buddy Michael Yielding uh, forgot him again. So y'all go over to his channel and tell him to bring back my, bring back our carburetor jets because I need those. Let's look at time. Are you looking for information on Mopars? YouTube channel just Mopar. Time trial number one. I'm in right hand lane. Went a 649, had a 14 reaction, which was good, and a 143 60 foot. So my 60 foot was down about, I don't know, three hundredths from my best last time. Typically on the second pass, it does speed up. So let's look at pass number two. So here's pass number two, side by side. That was difference in about an hour between the two. Um, there was actually a guy that wrecked at the track that day. So they had to wait and clean that stuff up. So about an hour later, my 60 foot, 143 with an eight. My ET, 648 with a two. So mile per hour was down just slightly. Both were in the right hand lane and my reaction time was a little bit worse. Here's first round. There's three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's our friend Ross. I'll put a link to his channel up. There's Drew. Uh, I lost count. Three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I bet there's gonna be thirty cars. eliminations i was in the right lane 60 foot dropped just a little bit 144.5 um i dialed in a 648 and ran a 54 and you can see my mile per hour i had to let off of it quite a bit there so i i was scared i was actually going to break out but um they had a pretty terrible reaction time with that 146 and my 35 should have been better but it gets worse for me today Ten 
quick and breaks out. So here is round number two of eliminations. We both had pretty terrible reaction times, um, but I, I dialed a 48 and I ran a 48 with a five. So the good thing about the whole weekend was the car staying very consistent. So that's exciting. Um, so you'll see my 105, uh, 93. I had a 106 uh, the next pass, but staying at 105, 106 range, Without my little scoop thing, I think it's right on point, but you'll remember the blue dart that I just ran there, whatever that I was. I actually raced him three weeks ago. Let me show you the comparison here. So he runs a track every single weekend, so he's a really good comparison. Uh, last time, you see March 17th versus May 14th. Uh, he ran an ET of 768. Now he's down to a 774. So... He dialed a 777. So you can see that, what is that? Uh, almost a 13 hundredths slower. And if you look at mine, uh, that would actually meant that I had picked up, if I picked up that 13 hundredths, that one put me back at a 635. So that would be a little bit faster than uh, previously. So I think my converter's doing pretty well there if you want to see a side-by-side -side on these tickets. And it was it's funny that, I was in the left lane both times, and he was in the right lane both times. Uh, but really good guy. His uh, his 60 foot was about the same, but also his car uh, has a warmed over small block and not swinging for the fences. So uh, he's got a good, consistent car running there. Let's go to the final round. you saw my last race video in the final round the dude that I beat and got first place he happened to uh, beat me this time in the third round so he did go on to win it I think let me show you what that looks like and here's the ticket from that madness it's 5 13 in the afternoon I did break out but that's not why I lost that's why I lost. That 109 to that 022 will get you every time. And he ran a 54 and a 48. He was probably letting off of it. I just buried my foot through the floorboard. Went a 106 and 647. Uh, 143, 60 foot. So. so here they all are side by side. And as for my traction issues, 143, 5. 143.7, 143.8, 143.7, That's all really pretty decent, especially considering the track surface and stuff. Um, I got no issue with that. I'm glad I left the 648 on the window. If I would have, uh, I do believe if my reaction time had been better on that one, I could have won, but that's how it goes. Can't win them all, so. I got a few other small changes I'm willing to make uh, before next time out. I can probably get my new fuel system hooked up. Um, I had a request to show that in a video, to show the return line and stuff. So I got to do that, but it'll be uh, probably May before I get to go back. So it'll probably warm up some more. I appreciate y'all watching. And I got a truck to build or something somewhere.